Hey everyone, I'm Marco Carnaccia, a product designer at Figma, and today I'll be talking about how you can design and build sites that truly speak for themselves. But before I get to that, let's rewind back to before I ended up at Figma. It's early last year, and the startup I'm working at is winding down after a challenging two years. It was my first and only design position at the time, so naturally, I was a bit worried about what was next for me. And as you could guess, I was in desperate need of a new portfolio. OK, so just go make a new portfolio, right? What's, what's the big deal? Well, it wasn't that simple. Despite having spent a couple of years as a solo designer at a startup, I did not feel I had produced enough relevant product design work to justify my skills at a quick glance. And if you know anything about hiring managers for product design roles, you probably also know that you can get passed over within seconds if your work doesn't stand out amongst a flood of applicants. So what did I do? Well, I decided to lean into what I did have a bunch of experience in, which was making Webflow websites. I had been making sites in Webflow since 2017 for agencies, freelance clients, my fiance's portfolio, and even some marketing sites for the startup I was leaving. But what I hadn't realized up until then was all of the relevant product design skills I had picked up just from using Webflow during those projects. Things like animations, interactions, layout, and styling. These had been my trusted building blocks for making great designs on the web for years. So I thought, what if I leverage these skills I had developed inside of Webflow to bring my limited amount of product design work to life? So I envisioned a portfolio that would loudly showcase my projects and stretch my designs to their fullest potential, making my small amount of design work come together to tell a big cohesive story about me and my design skills. Not just a website with screenshots and write-ups of my work, but a dedicated place for people to experience the products as they were intended, and to get to know a little bit more about me in the process. To achieve this vision, I built out the interactive prototypes for each of the products I had designed right inside of Webflow that showed exactly what each product was designed to do. For example, in my food delivery app, you were able to go through an ordering flow with a few simple taps. In my command line interface design for scheduling, you were able to experience what it feels like to quickly and effortlessly share your availability with others. And in my OS design concepts, you immediately got a sense for how this might help with navigating your computer and keeping you in flow. To me, this was the closest representation of my designs that I could provide to visitors right on the web. There's just something that's way more engaging about tapping and clicking around to see how something works over watching a video or looking at screenshots. But the best part of this approach for me is that I had them all built and managed within Webflow. So I didn't have to struggle with creating videos or messing around with formatting worrying about which tools or imports were compatible with my site. Everything just worked exactly as I intended it to. And fast forward to having all of the prototypes of my designs built inside of Webflow, I realized I needed a home for each of them. But again, I didn't want these to just be hidden behind project pages with headings and thumbnail previews that could easily be overlooked or ignored. Of course, I plan to have those things live somewhere on the site, but what I really wanted was for visitors to be able to interact with my designs as soon as they landed on the page. So on the home page, I decided on using a bento grid layout to have everything feel approachable yet organized, and slotted in each of the working prototypes in their own interactive sandbox. And little by little, I assembled an entire grid highlighting all the best parts of my designs. And after seeing it all come together, I no longer felt like I didn't have enough design work to show for myself. And while this was a great approach for the products, to have the products speak for themselves, but how could I tell visitors more about me, the designer and the person? Something to get to know me better amongst all of this work. So I designed and built within the Bento grid items like Apple Music, Photos, Podcasts, and Twitter. 
I'm not going to call it X. <laughs> that played my favorite artist, podcast, showed photos of the places and people I loved, and even linked to some of my mid-tweets. I also designed an iMessage-like contact form, bringing a familiar and approachable way for visitors to get in touch with me. And I hooked it up to send a text to my phone, so whenever somebody filled it out, I could easily hit them back and keep the iMessage effect alive. And yeah, green bubbles were allowed to. And finally, finally, after all that, I clicked publish and was ready to share my work with the rest of the world. To my surprise, my portfolio caught the eye of many, including someone you might be familiar with. Jordan Singer, a well-known designer and the founder of Diagram a startup that was focused on making design tools and that was just beginning to explore AI and design. And out of nowhere one night, Jordan DM'd me this. <laughs> well, actually, it was more like this. And he told me he was a huge fan of my portfolio site and asked if I'd like to lead design at Diagram. And that was pretty much a no-brainer. At Diagram, I had the opportunity to work on a wide array of AI design tool explorations. Like Magician, an AI utility plugin in Figma that could generate images, text, SVG icons, and even rename your layers for you. And Genius, our experimental AI design assistant that could work alongside you. As part of a rollout for Genius, we wanted to put out a teaser site to get people excited for what we were all working so hard on. For the teaser, I designed a microsite in Webflow that showed exactly what we were building. The page was a movie trailer style reveal of Genius showing a collaborative process of designing a screen alongside an AI assistant. This was entirely built using Webflow animations. And we didn't really need to say much more. Even though there, even though there was only the name of the product and a forward description at the end of the video, or the end of the animation, the trailer did all the talking for us and got people excited and interested in what we were working on. A few months after that, we knew it was time to redesign Diagram.com. We now had two new product releases coming down the pipeline and wanted to make sure they were given the proper space to shine on our site. And at this point, I knew I was the best person for this job. I told Jordan about my experience using Webflow while building my portfolio and the teaser site, and knew that if I took this on, it would allow our engineers to focus on product development. Jordan agreed, and I started to design the new diagram.com. The expectations were pretty low, however, as Jordan told me it only needed to be as good as Linear's website. And, the <laughs> and this was me pretending that I could easily do that. So what did I do this time? Well, I brought back the strategy that got me the job at Diagram in the first place. At Diagram, I suddenly had an arsenal of products that I could bring to life on the web. And I wanted to go as crazy as possible on that bento grid-based design that I did for my portfolio when I had much less to show off. And so I did exactly that. I took each product and gave it its own bento grid section to show what each does through small, informative, and engaging animated prototypes, each highlighting a unique feature or benefit they offered. It was the perfect way to represent all of our ongoing work. And as a company, it was a way for us to show, not just tell, what our team was capable of and gave us a recognizable brand and feel for the future. And if we take a closer look at these grid items, we can see some of them showed zoomed in prototypes of the actual products and what they do, while others, like these wand cards, invite you to reveal the features and benefits in a fun yet informative way. But in each of these approaches, the copy, while informative and helpful, is complementary to the experience. First and foremost is direct access to interacting with a product or idea as soon as you land on the site. This is the best way in my opinion, to have a site speak for itself. Now, I hope this has all been helpful so far. 
But do you want to know the real key is to creating sites like this? It all starts with having a super clean, meticulously organized design file, one that is spec'd out for every single use case and screen size imaginable, entirely prototyped out with every last layer named. <laughs> and I'm happy to announce here at WebflowConf, and for the first time ever, I'm going to be revealing that extremely organized, extremely organized and polished design file that I used for diagram.com. Are you all ready? Are you? <laughs> OK, here it is. As you can see, this shit is a mess. <laughs> no, seriously, I don't know where a single thing is on here. My point is this, and for real, don't tell anyone at Figma I'm saying this. This isn't live, is it? B but seriously, when you are the one designing and building out a marketing site, of course it is awesome if you could spend the time setting up that perfect file. And there's a ton of benefits for doing so, trust me. But the reality is, things move fast, really fast, especially at a startup. And if you are the one designing and building the project, you have complete design control all the way through to hitting that publish button. So for me, a large part of the design process for websites specifically that I'm building, I do that directly in Webflow. If I had to break it down for you, for website projects that I'm designing and building, I spend about 30% of my time in Figma to explore ideas, decide what I'm gonna build, and get the overall feel and structure laid out. For the remaining 70%, I head to Webflow once an idea clicks and start executing it there. And I often discover that the thing I designed might not work perfectly in practice. This gives me the flexibility to design around those situations as soon as they come up. And since my design wasn't 100% finalized in my design file, it's never a major setback to my process if I need to rework it. Now, I want to pause here because Webflow announced some really awesome variants and components features that's going to change this completely. So this talk might not be as relevant after, well, this morning. But this will probably even out as I start to try out the, some of those features. But when we're thinking about things like animation and some of the new ideas that come about when you can design in the final medium, for all those example animations you've seen on the Genius Teaser, Diagram.com, My Portfolio, these were heavily conceptualized and tweaked during the build process. Of course, I used the design file to get a rough idea of how they might work, but it's in Webflow where I figure out exactly what they'll do and can make sure they feel perfect within context. Now, I'm not saying you should do this, and like I said, the new features that Webflow is going to put with variants and components, I'm super happy about. I'll be spending more time in Figma. I know the people at Figma will be really happy to hear this. But the key to making great sites and what works, this is what has worked for me in the past. So I'm sure there are a lot of different opinions about this, but this one is mine. And so that's it. I've shown you how I've used Webflow to breathe life into my design work, creating a portfolio brand, and personal style that speaks for me by showing who I am and what I can do, and how you can create sites that truly speak for themselves. Now, I want to see you do it. I believe that you, too, can leverage Webflow or any other tool to showcase your best self in a way that speaks volumes about you, your skills, and your creativity. So the next time I visit your site, I hope it shows me exactly what you're all about. Thank you.